It is Sunday the 13th of January 1985 as passengers from all over the world congregate at Cunard's New York terminal to escape from the cold winter into the warm world of Cunard. Cunard welcomes you on board QE2 for the Queen Elizabeth II 1985 World Cruise, the Golden Route. Welcome aboard. First port of call, Port Everglades, an opportunity for passengers to explore this foremost beach resort, whether by strolling along the famous beaches or indulging in many waterborne activities available here, and also an opportunity for new passengers to join QE2. Queen Elizabeth II, last of the great superliners, it offers luxury, style and elegance, words synonymous with the Cunard line. My name is Bob Arnott and I'm captain and master of Queen Elizabeth II. Together with my ship's company, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you on board for this 1985 Golden Route World Cruise. Over the oceans that we shall travel and the many ports that we shall visit, I hope you will enjoy every moment of your time spent with us on this lovely ship. As the ship anchors off the coast of Haiti, she is greeted by a fleet of tiny boats, some laden with souvenirs, others with locals eager to dive for quarters. Port-au-Prince, the capital of Haiti, is renowned for its voodoo and folklore, and everywhere you look you are reminded of a culture deep-rooted in African origins. This French-speaking island is probably the only place in the world where you can buy 18 different types of rum, ranging from hibiscus flavour to banana. Exclusive hotels such as the El Rancho, high up in the hills, also abound with local charm.
between the ports we visit on our cruise, days at sea can be spent in a variety of ways. Writing postcards and letters home, practicing those golf swings, or working off a few extra pounds at the renowned Golden Door Spa at Sea, whose trained staff have fitness programs to suit everyone. It need not always be the energetic workout you choose. There is also a team of skilled masseurs on board who will smooth away any tension or strain. There is always time to relax during your cruise. A lazy swim in one of Queen Elizabeth II's four pools. or perhaps lie in the sun reading a good book. The Queen Elizabeth II is well known for its sumptuous food. It offers a daily lunch buffet for those who prefer to have a light snack by the pool in the new Megwidome complex. In the peaceful afternoons on board, there is time for a leisurely stroll, a game of bridge in the Queen's room, or perhaps learn a new dance with Geoffrey and Cheryl Dobinson in the two-tiered double room. QE2, with its complement of 81 officers and 914 crew, ensures that during your voyage, you are cared for from morning to night, 24 hours a day. At one of the many cocktail parties during your world cruise, you will have the opportunity to meet our very popular captain, Bob Arnett. These formal and friendly functions are an opportunity to meet old friends and make new ones. Your cruise director on board, John Butt, with Ian Inder and Elaine McKay, your social directors, introduce you to the ship's senior officers and once again to your host, Captain Bob Arnott. Good day, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. And so to dinner in one of the four excellent restaurants on board. Seen here, the Queen's Grill, the most exclusive restaurant afloat.
and after dinner perhaps, take a chance in the Players Club Casino. Or watch one of the many fabulous shows on board, here featuring the hilarious Forbidden Broadway. After the show, there is time to dance the night away in the multi-purpose new Magradome Centre's discotheque, the Club Lido, with live music from a very talented young British group, Lee Santu, and recorded sounds from our Lido host, Stuart Barton. There's a lovely couple, Chris and Dave, who are, who are dancing on the floor. They're celebrating their anniversary this evening, which is it's exciting, you see. After a fun-filled night, the morning finds us at anchor off Cartagena, the last bastion of the Spanish main. As we leave Cartagena, Captain Bob, aided by the Colombian pilot, steers us majestically towards Cristobal and one of the modern wonders of the world, the Panama Canal. Gat and Locks are the first in a series of three sets, 
that enabled the Queen Elizabeth to travel the 43 miles between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. As we pass through the first lock, we can see American paratroopers on maneuvers, descending into the dense Panamanian jungle. Queen Elizabeth II pays the highest toll of any ship using the canal. The total cost is $123,000. This unique view of an emptied lock chamber gives some indication of the mammoth effort that went into constructing this waterway. For 70 years the Panama Canal has provided continuous service to international shipping. More than 625,000 vessels have transited the waterway, carrying nearly 4 billion tonnes of the world's goods from one ocean to the other. With expertise and experience developed over the years, the canal team of professionals safely and effectively handles all types and sizes of vessels and hundreds of different commodities destined for countries throughout the world, of which the Queen Elizabeth II is the largest passenger ship ever to transit the canal. The first ship slipped silently through the blue-green waters of the Panama Canal on August the 15th, 1914. It marked the fulfilment of a dream dating back to the explorations of Columbus. The first serious attempt to create a water passage between the world's two great oceans was made by the French in 1881. But the credit for making the dream a reality belongs to the United States. The monumental effort to bridge the divide required the excavation of approximately 262 billion cubic yards of earth between 1881 and 1914. A little known fact, however, is that more material has been removed from the Panama Canal since its completion than was removed during its creation. The Pacific-bound QE2 enters Pedro Miguel Locks at the south end of the Gay Yard Cut. Here it is lowered 31 feet in one step to Mira Flores Lake, a small artificial body of water a mile wide which separates the two sets of Pacific Locks. The length of Pedro Miguel Locks is five-sixths of a mile.
and from one of the highest locations in Panama, we get a spectacular view of Panama City and the Blue Pacific beyond. Wherever in the world Queen Elizabeth II travels, she draws a large crowd of spectators, just a glimpse and wish that they were on board the greatest liner afloat. As the gates open to the final locks at Miraflores, the powerful locomotives affectionately known as mules slowly pull the 67,000 tons of Queen Elizabeth II through towards the Pacific. With the length of the QE2 being 963 feet and its beam 105 feet, there is little room for error considering that each lock is 1,000 feet long and 110 feet wide. The leeway is 30 inches at either side and 18 feet 6 inches at each end. To give some idea of the size of this ship, she is equivalent in length to three football pitches. As the Queen Elizabeth sails off for an evening in dock at Balboa, the port for Panama City, we all relax after travelling through one of man's greatest constructions. Now is a time to ponder on people we have met and places we've seen, relaxing in the matchless comfort of QE2. Photographer's shop, 6 rays on upper deck between the casino and the double down room is now open. On display today are all photographs taken from the Queen's Grill, Princess Grill and Tables of the World restaurant. The photographer's shop will remain open until 4pm today. Thank you. sail towards another beautiful sunset, we are brilliantly entertained by the gifted, world-famous classical pianist, Mr. John Briggs.
Elizabeth II, on her 10th world cruise, a true ambassador of the seas, glides majestically towards Acapulco, the pride of the Mexican Riviera. sun, sea and sand, and the spectacular world-famous high divers of La Quebrada Cliffs. And as the sun sets over Acapulco, we set sail for Los Angeles and continue along the golden route of the 1985 World Cruise. Los Angeles, California. Queen Elizabeth II prepares for the continuation of the 1985 World Cruise. Los Angeles, although infamous for its smog, offers many attractions. At nearby Hollywood, home of the world's film industry, there seems to be a star at every turn, especially on Sunset Boulevard. Undoubtedly the biggest attraction is the Queen Mary resting at Long Beach. The grand old Cunada has now made way for the new sovereign of the seas, Queen Elizabeth II. Gracefully, the Queen Elizabeth II steams westward across the vast Pacific Ocean, following the sun on this, the Golden Route World Cruise of 1985. Here, Captain Bob Arnott hosts one of the many cocktail parties at which passengers can meet old friends or make new friends with fellow travellers. Later, entertainment is provided by the tap dancing of Broadway star Mr. Tommy Tune. January the 28th, one day before crossing the international date line and losing a whole day, we cross another very important line, the equator. To celebrate this auspicious occasion, King Neptune rises from the deep and presides over a court which tries and finds all unfortunates guilty. Bye. 
friendship. But the finest I must now proclaim to my gallant captain, to his guests and crew, I say it is the QE2. Oh, fellas. February the 1st finds us in Papiete, greeted by the charming melodies of Tahiti. This volcanic island boasts both black and white sand beaches, ideal for surfing and topping up the Thames. Another feature of Papiete is the Gauguin Museum, a stunning tribute to the French artist. It houses many fine works and is set between a lush botanical garden and an azure lagoon. Tahiti is famous for being involved in the mutiny on the bounty, for it was here in 1778 that Captain Bly, deposed captain of the bounty, was washed ashore. Indeed close to paradise, Tahiti is an adventure, Tahiti is the island of love. And so on to Morea, considered by many to be the most beautiful island in the world. An ideal setting for the musical movie South Pacific. Maria is an island of splendor and tranquility where hustle and bustle takes the back seat. Heavy swells and high winds around the Cook Islands made it impossible for our QE2 passengers to visit Rarotonga. But this did not stop them getting a taste of the island because Rarotonga came to us. Sailing away from Rarotonga, we are entertained by the good humour and good nature of Dom De Luise, famous comedy movie star. The QE2 is a wonderful ship, it really is. It moves so fast in the water. I mean, there are stars on board. Oh, Elizabeth Taylor is on board. I can't believe it. It's so exciting. Look at this fresh, wonderful water from the from the pipes of the ship. It's great. It's just wonderful. And there's all kinds of, oh my goodness, hors d'oeuvres, tips. Look at this. Bangers. Come on board and get your banger. <laughs> Auckland, New Zealand's largest and most cosmopolitan city. A little way out of Auckland is Rotorua, famous for its gushing geysers, steaming hot springs, and bubbling mud pools. At Rainbow Springs, you may feed trout virtually by hand and see a program of traditional dancing and songs. and also get a glimpse of the kiwi, New Zealand's national bird. There are more sheep in New Zealand than people, and raising and preparing lamb here is an art form. Kiwi 2 passengers were treated to a sheep shearing demonstration. The art of shearing has been handed down from father to son for many generations.
after Auckland, we were entertained by star of the Folly Berger, Linda Gloria. As QE2 manoeuvres into the port of Wellington, New Zealand's capital, passengers have the opportunity to travel to the top of Mount Victoria on the Kilburn cable car. New Zealanders are very proud of their beautiful botanical gardens, especially in Christchurch which is renowned as the Garden City and said to be the most English city outside of Britain. As we prepare to leave New Zealand, we have a final glimpse of the stunning terrain of the South Island. Showtime with the singing and dancing talents of international star Peter Gordino. Cunard's momentous arrival in Sydney, QE2 sailed in with the Saga Fjord, recently proclaimed cruise ship of the year. docks in the heart of Sydney, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Overlooking the famous Coat Hanger Bridge and the Opera House. The Opera House, the most spectacular building in this city, serves as the heart of Sydney's cultural life.
It stands with its sharply curving white roof, shaped like sails, in total harmony with the harbour and its yachts. One of the tallest buildings in Sydney is Centrepoint, and from the observation platform, the view is absolutely breathtaking. A little way along the rugged coastline lies one of Australia's most famous beaches, Bondi. Renowned for its surfing, a major Australian pastime. During our overnight stay in Sydney, Passengers from Queen Elizabeth II and Cunard's newest ship, the MV Sargafjord, were invited to a St. Valentine's Ball held aboard QE2. On leaving Sydney, the daily routine returns to normal. The evening show was provided by the entertainment staff of the MV Sargafjord. Tasmania is known as the ABC country, famous for its apples, its beer and its countryside. Blessed with an excellent deep water harbour, Hobart became well known to sailors around the world. Passengers had a chance to view the beautiful countryside and quaint villages, many pausing for a refreshing Devonshire tea, a strangely English tradition. Half an hour from Hobart lies historic Port Arthur, one of the first penal colonies set up by the British in Australia. Abandoned in the late 19th century, the prison was then refurbished into a museum. to return to the QE2. Those who stopped by the Tasmanian Devil Park were able to have a close-up view of some of Tasmania's animals. Here we have Henrietta the Cuddly Wombat. And here Fred the ice cream eating possum. This small animal sanctuary, run by John Hamilton, an English journalist, houses the infamous Tasmanian Devil. Still found in the wild, these scavengers have a bite four times more powerful than a Doberman Pinscher. And so Queen Elizabeth II sails towards Adelaide. In Australia, a famous Hong Kong tailor joined the ship, offering an exclusive made-to-measure service, Sam's of Hong Kong. Tuesday morning, February the 19th, the QE2 has an awe-inspiring welcome to Adelaide.
Adelaide, the capital city of South Australia, was literally designed for enjoyment, founded in the 1830s by Colonel William Light. The surrounding areas of Adelaide were struck by fire in 1982. Reminders can still be seen by the shells of burned out houses and charred trees. Miraculously, one sanctuary remained unharmed, the Kangaroo and Koala Bear Park. Oh, don't do that. Very much a favourite of locals and tourists alike, one can wander through among the animals and hold and even cuddle a cuddly koala bear. Mum's tummy till they get too big. Isn't she lovely? She's called Pani. That's an Aboriginal name. It means the sitter because she just sits in the tree. Come on, have some of this one. I'll put her on have the back. Have a leaf. Okay. The pilot, under the watchful eye of Captain Bob, steers the mighty QE2 out of the port of Adelaide. This inaugural port to the QE2 made our farewell as emotional as our arrival. <laughs> Along the coast, we were entertained by international star Max Bygraves. Oh, oh, Mac and Roll, who's a naughty boy? You won the cup at Wimbledon and then you jumped for joy. You upset all the lines when you kicked up all the grass. If I'd have been the umpire, and I can't find that last line, you know. <laughs> Beautiful girl swims ashore. She says to him, Oh, she, how long have you been here? He said, I don't know. He said, I was a small boy when I was shipwrecked. She said, How do you live? He's like, I eat the fruit off the trees. He said, I catch fish. Rest of the day, so I flick pebbles into the sea. She said, what do you do about sex? He said, what's sex? And she shows him, and afterwards she said to him, did you like that? He said, no, I did not. <laughs> she said, why not? He said, look what you've done to my pebble flicker. <laughs> I'm crazy for trouble. Crazy for crying. And I'm crazy for love. Food is um, beautifully cooked. And what I liked about the QE2, what I like about it, is that it floats. But um, all kidding aside, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely ship. I'll come back again and again every time they ask me. I, I just love it. So does my wife. We enjoy it tremendously. Our final port on the Australian segment of the 1985 World Cruise is Perth and her adjoining port of Fremantle. It used to be known as the Gateway of Western Australia. The sunny metropolis of a million people boasts an even greater claim to fame. It is the home of the America's Cup, which now resides in this Perth Yacht Club. Won in 1984, 
this most prestigious yachting cup had never before left the United States. The triumphant yacht Australia II, famous for its revolutionary keel, is berthed in Fremantle, awaiting the next challenge in 1987. Such is the secrecy surrounding this exclusive race, that when we attempted to visit the defence headquarters in Fremantle Harbour, we were politely refused entry. Although the race is not for another two years, teams are already out in preparation and their secrets are closely guarded. A major highlight for passengers completing the whole world cruise was a luncheon at the governor's house. This gala occasion was hosted by Premier of Western Australia, the Honourable Brian Burke, who again reminded everyone about the America's Cup. To defend the Cup, and uh, we've introduced a whole lot of new regulations governing the sailing just to assist our American competitors. In future, all of their boats must be sailed with sails made of kangaroo skins. And the animals from which the skins are taken must be native to the United States. Cunard's representative was Captain Douglas Ridley. Itself, uh, to commemorate the first visit of QE2. So I'd like to thank him on behalf of Cunard Line, Captain Ornett, who should be joining us shortly, and all the passengers here today who are doing a full world cruise. After lunch, we were entertained by some traditional Aborigine dancing. After such a tremendous time in Australia, we all felt sad to bid farewell to such a friendly country. Sailing towards Bali, we are entertained by award-winning actress Cheetah Rivera. Gem of Indonesia. In natural beauty and noted for art and dance, passengers could sample a taste of Eastern culture. One of the marvels of Bali is the Mother Temple of Basaki at the foot of the volcanic Mount Agung. Bali's largest and holiest sanctuary, it is a series of open-air enclosures and pagodas comprising a temple complex.
the Kiri two passengers retreated to a performance of the Barong dance. The Barong play represents an eternal fight between good and evil spirits. One of our greatest memories of Bali was the bartering. The QE2 weighed down with souvenirs and purchases from Bali continues on its golden route. And for a few keen passengers, early morning wake-ups to Chairman Mao exercises, organised by the Golden Door. It is now the end of February, and we arrive in Manila, gateway to the Orient, and the Philippines capital. A dynamic and interesting city, heavily influenced by America. After World War II, the remaining American Jeeps were transformed into the gaily coloured jeepney common on the streets of Manila. And meanwhile, back in the theatre bar... Saying you are hereby authorised, Admiral Alan Shepard, on my behalf to appoint Captain Robert Arna to the rank of Admiral in the Texas Navy. One of the hosts, Admiral Alan Shepard, was the first American in space. He just caught us in a Texas party. We're having a board the QE2. As a matter of fact, we're not really in Texas. We're approaching Hong Kong at this point. But Louise and I are with a group of Texans having a little fun tonight, celebrating the independence of the Republic of Texas. It just shows you anything can happen on the QE2. There is no better way to arrive in Hong Kong and on the deck of the world's greatest liner, through a harbour busy with ships and tiny junks. Here, Kiwi 2 is treated to its regular wash and brush up, where hundreds of locals hang precariously painting the massive hull. This three and a half days provides passengers with ideal opportunity to tour parts of Red China, or simply explore Hong Kong with trips on the famous Star Ferry or perhaps stroll along Nathan Road, a shopper's paradise. Passengers who have visited Hong Kong will readily remember the kaleidoscope of colours and cultures in this unique place. As we say a fond farewell to Hong Kong, we are joined by comedian Alan King. Who's there at six in the morning? It's the first sound I heard as a child. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never see the lights again. My mother calls me all the time. She says, he's drinking at six o'clock in the morning. I said, well, he's been drinking since he's three. Leave him alone. I mean, maybe he's right. He's 94. Pattaya, one of the major resorts of Thailand, provides time for rest and relaxation. 
Most visitors arriving here by ship have their hearts set on a visit to Bangkok. It's an easy two and a half hour trip by bus to Thailand's capital and a journey of discovery to one of the world's most interesting and exotic cities. Bangkok is the home of the royal palace, of temples and many Buddhas. Thailand's spiritual centre, Bangkok, boasts more than 300 Buddhist temples, one of the finest being Wat Tremit Temple, which houses a five and a half ton solid gold Buddha. A network of canals or klongs were built to facilitate transportation and commerce. Not surprisingly, Bangkok became known as the Venice of the East. Passengers were also treated to a display of traditional Thai boxing where both hands and feet are allowed as a means of attack. On board, our own Darrell Lehman of the Golden Door, a fourth Dan black belt in karate, exhibits his skills in the Shops on Board and Steiner's Oriental Extravaganza show. by the shops on board and hair creations were designed by Steiners of London with dance by Jeffrey and Cheryl Dobinson sheer elegance and hosted by Stuart Barton this is Bob Angel Cruise actor speaking, and I'm delighted to say that uh, the cruise is going well. We're nearly halfway through. The time is indeed speeding by, and I'm sure you recall the terrific welcomes we had in Australia. Of course, Sydney with their usual fantastic welcomes, and for the first time, Adelaide and Perth. And indeed, uh, we've had a terrific sort of diversified format of entertainment with lots more good things, big names coming up for you. So enjoy the rest of the cruise. Welcome to Singapore, where East meets West. This beautiful city, meticulously clean, has some of the most luxurious shopping in the world. The climate encourages magnificent botanical gardens. And with the Jurong Bird Park, all is lushly ablaze with colour. South of Singapore, QE2 arrives in the port of Kilang, the port for Kuala Lumpur. While a few passengers visited this beautiful city, most relaxed on board and were entertained by local dance. Still following the sun, the pilot for Colombo arrives on board the QE2. On the many miles the QE2 steams, she is met by many boats, both large and small, of which this must be the very smallest of them all. Our mighty ship edges into the harbour under the supervision of Captain Bob and his navigators.
is a dream of tropical splendors, noted for its spice and gems. As one of the world's main sources of precious stones, all readily available upon the quayside. One of the permanent entertainments on QE2 is the Mikari Show Band, who back all of the QE2 shows. Here we feature the band with resident singer Brenda Blackman. Bombay, gateway to India, country of 700 million people, one of the most populated areas of the world. Perhaps the major highlight of this, the 1985 world cruise, was a tour organized by American Express on board simply called a dream realized, the Taj Mahal. Although two plane flights away from Bombay, this trip to Agra, the home of the glorious Taj Mahal, left all spellbound in the awe of one of the seven modern wonders of the world. A construction entirely created in marble, it is perfectly symmetrical. Built by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan as an expression of his love for his wife, it is considered a holy shrine at which people must take off their shoes when visiting. The beauty of this building is more impressive at sunrise and sunset a never to be forgotten memory. Also on this same tour, passengers were able to visit the beautiful city of Fateh Pur Sikri an almost perfectly preserved stronghold. It was built in the 16th century by Akbar, the grandfather of Shah Jahan. On our return to Bombay, we were treated to glimpses of the daily life of India. Showtime with Sheer Elegance and Mr. Frankie Vaughan. The Seychelles are almost four degrees south of the equator. QE2 anchors in the warm waters of the Indian Ocean, just off the beautiful island of Mahe. This island, full with tropical birds and fringed with creamy white beaches, moves slowly, peacefully and deliberately. On board the Queen Elizabeth, the double down room is the centre for many of the passenger party nights. Here we see the 1985 World Cruise Hat Parade. All of this frivolity is superbly backed by Joe Loss and his orchestra. 
of the many years I've had the honor and privilege to play for you with my orchestra, it is really wonderful to see people, all of you, from all parts of the world, all here for one great reason, to enjoy yourself on the world's greatest liner, the QE2. Bless you, don't forget, always stay in the mood. Resting on the southeastern coast of Africa, along the Indian Ocean, is South Africa's busiest harbour, Durban. Long known as the holiday city, Durban is the perfect match of sun and fun. Outside Durban, is the valley of the Thousand Hills. This is unspoiled Zulu country where we were able to view a Zulu settlement and watch a spirited display of some Zulu dancing. Our arrival into Cape Town is a privilege as we sail from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic around the Cape of Good Hope. We are greeted by the stunning crest of Table Mountain. At this splendid welcome, our own Captain Bob Arnott was special guest of honour. Cape Town made our own passengers feel just as special. From the top of Table Mountain, the QE2, one of the world's largest ships, is made to look small. And from this vantage point, the views of the southernmost tip of Africa are magnificent. the annual World Cruise Society dinner was held, starting with a glass of champagne to watch the golden sunset for this, the Golden Route World Cruise. After some Zulu dancing, dinner and cabaret were provided at the Cape Sun Hotel, here World Cruise Society passengers were able to meet old and new friends and chat with senior executives of Cunard. as was the cruise, was an experience that will long be remembered. The reason Cunard is still the only way to travel was summed up by President of Cunard, Mr. R. Barner. 
We at Kennard feel very privileged to have the QE2 and to be able to run around world cruises. And 1985's Golden Route was a wonderful experience for all of us who participated in it. We had so many wonderful people from all over the world. QE2 traveled the first time around the south of Australia and uh, received great uh, receptions and wonderful press coverage. And thanks to all of you, the Golden Route was a wonderful success. 1986 World Cruise will work hard to try to keep up the standards, and I hope all of you will come and join us in 1986. Thank you very much. On the QE2, passengers are able to sit back and relax. Declare the country fair open. But every World Cruise, passengers and crew help organize and contribute to a county fair, where all the proceeds go to charity. This year, the charity was the Lord Nelson Appeal for a Sailing Ship for the Disabled. And as in past years, the enjoyment generated by this fair led to overwhelming generosity from both passengers and crew. it was the turn of the passengers to entertain. five-day crossing of the South Atlantic from Cape Town to Brazil, the festive spirit was very much in evidence, especially at the Grand Masquerade Ball. After a brief stop in Santos, we arrive in the festival city of Rio de Janeiro. The most dramatic feature of Rio is her natural beauty. Long, deep, tropical cliffs jut out over the beaches, wrapping around the shore. The tropics meet the sea. It is an amazing sight. High hills such as the Sugarloaf Mountain encompass this dazzling city, creating a high-spirited world of her own. The recognized feature of Rio is the huge Statue of Christ, overlooking and keeping watch on the city. The drive to the Statue of Christ, up the 2,300 foot Corcovada mountain, through a tropical rainforest, is literally breathtaking. city. The title is well deserved. But Rio is not a city for the passive. Rio worships the sun and the long crowded bleached white beaches are the evidence. The most famous beaches and the most crowded are Copacabana and Ipanema, which of course make for the best people watching. Just as promised in the song, the girls of Ipanema are tall and tan and young and lovely, and so are the men. sports abound, and with skills like soccer volleyball, no wonder Brazil is renowned as the best soccer nation in the world. Built on two levels, Salvador de Bahia was once Brazil's colonial capital. It is a town of history, a city of deep religious conviction. Leaving 
leaving South America behind, we follow the sun to the Caribbean and Martinique. Martinique is a sun-drenched island 4,000 miles from Paris, but it's still French through and through. The last port of call on the 1985 world cruise was St. Thomas, famous for its duty-free shopping and for its long white beaches. Many famous people have travelled aboard QE2. Here is Dr. Christian Barnard. Well, this is now my fourth trip on um, the QE2, and um, I seem to enjoy it more and more the more often I get on the ship. What I like about uh, the QE2 is the uh, tremendous hospitality here uh, from the staff, uh, the excellent food uh, in the dining rooms, and the fact that you meet uh, so many wonderful people on the ship. I hope that uh, this will not be my last trip as I really enjoy it very much. As the Queen Elizabeth II sails towards Port Everglades, we must remember that she is not just a ship, she's an event with every amenity of a modern city. Shops on board include Harrods of Knightsbridge, the Computer Learning Centre, Express Bank, the only floating flower shop in the world, and Steiners of London. All this summed up by Vincent Price. QE2, one of the great magic names of the seas. Very few of them left, you know, these great ships. I had the great pleasure of being on her, oh, 17 years ago. And it was magic then, and it's magic now. Really a great ship. A wonderful home away from home. The Queen Elizabeth II is to many their second home. And during this 1985 Golden Route World Cruise, she has followed the sun. On her journey, she has provided us with many wonderful memories that will remain with us forever. At the final cocktail party, friends bid their farewells and plan to meet again next year for the 1986 World Cruise and capture the spirit of the explorers. Finally, the last word must be left with our host and master of the Queen Elizabeth II, Captain Bob Arnott. The passengers and crew have fond memories of Queen Elizabeth II, and for me she is something special. I retire in July this year after 45 years' service, of which 38 have been with the Cunard Line. I have enjoyed my life at sea, and although I shall miss the many friends I have made, I am really looking forward to my retirement.